Welcome back to Morning Joe. We're expecting some more key inflation data today after yesterday's Labor Department report revealed consumer prices rose just 0.1 percent in March. It marks a sharp slowdown from recent months as the Fed weighs its next move on interest rates. Joining us now to make sense of the numbers, former Treasury official, Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner at the big wall with his big charts. Steve, good morning. What are you looking at? Good morning, Willie. Well, uh, we had un uh, we had inflation numbers. I'm sorry, uh, yesterday, as you said, and and the news was basically pretty good. So let's look at it a couple ways. First, we have what we call headline inflation, which is all the prices put together, and you can see that we climbed that mountain. These are year over year numbers, and then we came down that mountain. You can see the monthly increases coming down. This decline is heavily driven by things like energy, gas prices having peaked after that terrible time about a year or so ago, food and so forth, and coming down from six to five percent in just one month. So that's really good news. The thing that we need to be a little bit concerned about is what we call core inflation, where you take out food, energy, and the things that do move up and down so quickly and look at, at literally the core of the economy. And there the news wasn't quite as good. It ticked up a little bit uh, to just over five percent. And this is the challenge for the Fed. We've got to get from there to there, and that's going to be still hard work. Maybe at least one more interest rate coming in early May, and then we'll see what happens from there. Is that the sense, Steve, that they will make one more interest rate hike at the Fed before kind of leaving things steady? The market is jumping up and down on that based on every little indicator. Right now, it's at about a two-thirds chance hmm. of, a, of another 25 basis point, quarter of a point increase uh, and then the Fed pausing to see what happens after that. All right, let's move down the wall to your next chart and some really good news. In fact, a record uh, for black unemployment in this country. Yeah, so last Friday we had the jobs numbers, 236,000 new jobs, about as expected, continuing that pace of very steady, strong job creation. But the really interesting news, as you suggested, is what's been happening to black unemployment. Black unemployment has historically been much higher, the red line here, than white unemployment. You can see back in the early 80s, it was over 20 percent. After the GFC, it was about 17 percent, spiked up again during COVID. And now look, we're down here at 5 percent, the lowest uh, ever recorded. And, and actually, white unemployment didn't move barely at all last month. Black unemployment still coming down. This is what happens when you run what's called a hot economy, a strong economy that basically employers need, uh, need workers so much that they in effect, suck into the labor force people who haven't been able to find jobs uh, in, in less robust economic times. So a record low of 5 percent. And as you said, just to put that in perspective, during the financial crisis of 2010, black unemployment was at 17 percent. So 5 percent uh, is a good number. Let's look at your third chart. And uh, some more good news, Steve, about income gains strongest at the bottom of the economic ladder. Yeah, so we've talked a lot over the years about income inequality and how bad it is uh, for people at the bottom. And you can see, particularly after the GFC, this red line, the bottom quarter of Americans, people earning $35,000 or less, so not a lot of money. You can see what happened to their incomes, and you can remember all the angst that that created uh, when that happened. And then it, can, and then it climbed step back up steadily, and again, a strong economy before COVID brought it up, brought the rate of increase up here, COVID, but then look where it's come to now. And so since the beginning of 2020, real, meaning after inflation, uh, uh, increases in incomes for people at the bottom have been up 7 percent, whereas for people at the top, only up 2 percent. And so obviously a long way to go to address income inequality. But, uh, but as we run this hot economy, we're making a bit of progress on that front. So, Steve, do you have any explanation for the three charts that you've just shown us, the sort of three smiley faces on the economy, uh, and yet national polls indicate that people are upset about the economy, they're worried about the economy, and yet if you ask individual people, one by one, that you encounter at a grocery store or wherever, how are you doing, they say, hey, I'm, I'm doing okay. Why the disparity between the national number on people worried about the economy and a lot of people, individuals, who say, hey, I'm doing fine? Well, that's a great question, Mike, and it's one that uh, certainly uh, politicians and economists and all have been thinking about. I don't have a great answer for you. I think the best I can say is that there's a, a, a lag effect, and we've had a tough economy for a long time, including during COVID, that people still aren't feeling economically secure, feeling like they're in good shape. And... And, none, and even though people at the bottom are doing better, as I said, you're still talking about people earning $35,000 or less, not a lot of money in an economy that has just been through a really tough inflationary period. But that's the challenge for incumbent politicians to convince the voters that they're actually 
uh, on the case and trying to make things better. Steve Ratner with his charts breaking down the numbers for us. Steve, thanks so much. Eugene Daniels, let's talk about that incumbent politician, uh, Joe Biden. He looks at these numbers. He says, OK, inflation probably moving in the right direction. Black unemployment is at a record low. We're doing a little bit better with income inequality based on the numbers Steve just showed us. And yet I'm still underwater in my approval rating. How do they push out the message? How do they change the narrative around the economy that Steve was just talking about? Yeah, I mean, one, they have been talking about how much they've been focusing on black, black unemployment um, rates, how much they have been um, hoping to deal with income inequality in this country. And that is something you're going to continue to hear them talk about. They're going to keep saying, and they have to continue to say that that has been a focus of theirs. So they're celebrating those numbers, right? They've talked about how, you know, the president has continued to say, like, his, um, from the from the middle out and, and, and from the middle up and, and by middle out, that they are going to continue to work on these kinds of things for when it comes to the economy and on inflation inflation's cooling because we're doing everything right but at the same time like you just talked about they're not seeing those same numbers um, in polling right Americans still feel like um, things aren't going well in the economy and part of that is just that historically every people in this country see Republicans as better on the economy whether or not the facts actually bear out that actual case but that's been something that they've been having to deal with and also there's so many other issues that are going on in this country Country, that people just feel beleaguered, right? This is a country that feels under siege a lot of times because all of the things we've been talking about today, right? Abortion, um, gun rights, more mass shootings, um, an economy that's giving confusing information to folks. Um, and that doesn't seem like it's going to stop. But this administration feels like they have a handle on the economy. That could change, right? There was a time where we weren't even talking about inflation. I remember, um, you know, the, the White House kind of laughing at us for asking whether or not not, um, they really believe that inflation was going to be transitory if it was going to be something they'd be dealing with for a long time. So they're also very cautious in trying to say this is something that we're dealing with, this is something that we're working on, but they are celebrating these little wins because you kind of have to mm. when you're in a White House. Yeah, unemployment at historic lows, and if inflation continues to tick down, maybe a message president can take with him on the campaign trail. Eugene Daniels, thanks so much for your reporting. As always, we appreciate it.